it's the second in the mail in a row and probably there is one or two more coming your way because of the higher number of packages I've been receiving. But I'm sure you guys don't mind that, so let's get started. I'm trying to group items that are kind of similar, so today it's mostly about tools. And our first item is this dual channel thermometer with thermocouple input. I felt the need for a dual channel thermometer whenever I was doing uh, work on a project that had a heatsink. I wanted to know the temperature right on the package as well as the temperature of the heatsink to figure out if I have too much thermal resistance between a uh, device package and heatsink. And there are other situations uh, where you want to monitor two temperatures at the same time, so this gadget might be handy to keep around. Let's see what we get inside the package. We have uh, a user manual in English, that's nice. Uh, the meter itself. And we get uh, two K-type uh, thermocouples. It doesn't come with uh, any batteries, uh, but it works with uh, three AAA uh, batteries. So let's put some, uh, some batteries in. There are several models out there, I don't think this uh, particular one has anything special in terms of uh, specs, I just like the way it looks. It can measure various types of uh, thermocouples, you are not limited to just uh, K-type and you can switch between the uh, different types using the type button which will also update the display right here. But we'll leave it on the K-type because uh, these two I know they are K-type thermocouples. It can display uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit as well and you can switch between those with uh, this button right here. It uh, can display both temperatures or the difference between T1 and T2 and it also has a min-max average function. The accuracy according to the specs is uh, plus or minus 0.1% plus 0.6 degrees Celsius. So that's not bad for, uh, for what I actually needed to do. Uh, there is something curious about the backlight. I don't know how to uh, make it stay on because the backlight does come on whenever I press the um, a button on the meter, but it immediately shuts off. I know it maybe has a timeout of a couple of seconds, maybe five seconds and then shuts off. So I don't know how to keep the uh, backlight on. But anyway, this thing will be uh, very handy in my toolbox and I will put a link in the description below if you're interested in getting one. Next I have these uh, two soldering iron handles. These are for my Gordak 936 stations. One hand low, crappy, but very inexpensive, about uh, under $3 with free shipping. So I go through these uh, quite fast. I already used uh, one of them for a soldering job and there is a funny story with this. One day, a couple of uh, months ago, I needed a uh, new handle and placed an eBay order. A couple of days later, a new soldering job and I had the same problem. I needed a new handle. I completely forgot I ordered one two days ago. So I just placed a new order and only noticed this after receiving two packages with the same item. And a small spoiler alert, in two or three weeks I should be receiving an interesting soldering station from China and uh, we'll see how well it performs. It should be quite interesting. Our next item is this uh, magnetizer slash demagnetizer tool. This is intended as the name implies for magnetizing or demagnetizing the tip of your screwdriver. It's a very cheap tool, just $2 with free shipping. But to be honest, I'm not sure how often I'll be using it because I keep my day-to-day -day screwdrivers stored like this, hanging from magnets stuck to the underside of the shelves right above my workbench. So I always keep my screwdrivers magnetized, I'm kind of used to it. But I never had a tool like this in my lab, so I decided to get one anyway. To use this thing, you have to 
uh, run the uh, screwdriver shaft through the uh, desired uh, slot in the tool, something like this. So running it through that slot will get it magnetized and running it through this uh, other slot should get it demagnetized. A link uh, will be in the description below if you're interested in getting a tool like this. Next I have this set of rechargeable AA nickel metal hydrate batteries. The one hung low ones rated at uh, 3000 milliamps but suspected to be filled with sand as a viewer suggested instead of electrons because they have because they don't have anything near the rated uh, 3 amps capacity. I realized that a while ago and uh, they are very crappy but I still had this order placed for another set of four. I mean they're still usable in a remote control or something like that. For example I have this mini drone toy thing that I got a while ago and since I've uh, got it it's been running on a set of these uh, uh, rechargeables and they they didn't need any recharge in between so that's about one month usage so they're still usable for gadgets that don't have a high power consumption but for anything more serious like a flashlight for example this is a flashlight that I always keep around my uh, my bench in these ones you need uh, something better and as you can see I'm using my uh, Vartas rechargeable here and since I've uh, shown the AA batteries, let me also show you this uh, battery holder case designed to hold exactly this kind of uh, battery double A's. I like to keep uh, stuff organized and these are particularly useful uh, if you're traveling. You place your uh, batteries inside the uh, holder and throw it inside your bag and it will keep the batteries together and well protected. And these uh, battery holders also have these uh, features that they can be interlocked. I don't know if that's useful for you. It's up to you. Links for both of these uh, products will be in the description below. Our next item is called a cone step drill bit. And I've been wanting to get one of these for some time. I think I recently saw Steve Wagner show something like this in one of his videos. I think he had a... Uh, uh, multiple uh, sizes of uh, this step drill uh, model. I don't do much drilling here in the Voltog lab, but recently since I've built uh, several projects with enclosures, I felt the need for something like this. I think this will be really useful next time I need to drill holes for potentiometers or anything similar in a front panel or back panel of an enclosure. Instead of changing a bunch of different drill bit sizes, I can just drill a pilot hole and then go, go through with this tool up to the uh, required diameter. And with this particular model, I can go from 4mm up to 22mm. Of course, these will come in different grades of uh, quality and the ones that are very cheap coming from China are probably a rather soft metal and won't last you a very long time. So it's up to you if you want to step it up and get a well-known brand. I guess for me it all depends on how often I need this tool and I don't plan on using it very often so I think I'm going to be good with uh, this cheap one. Our next item is something very interesting at least for me and I'll start with a small story. Some years ago I was assembling some through-hole PCBs with LED bar graph modules and those particular bar graph modules with blue color LEDs were quite expensive and hard to get and sometimes they had the wrong polarity mark printed on them so after finishing the assembly on some boards I was noticing that one out of 40 bar graphs that was uh, present that were present on a PCB uh, was not working because of wrong polarity and I had to scrap about $50 worth of LEDs because of that desoldering that one bar graph out of the bunch was impossible especially because I didn't have a proper desoldering station and uh, using the old uh, classic solder sucker wasn't removing all the solder from the plated through holes. And I remember thinking if only I had a set of hollow needles with different sizes to poke between the pins and the plated through holes, I could maybe free that bar graph module and replace just that one that was uh, incorrectly soldered. And just so it happens, I stumbled upon this kit it uh, happened uh, a few years too late, but I got one anyway. 
because it might just come in handy uh, someday. The needles range from uh, 0 0.8 millimeters up to 2 millimeters in uh, 0.2 millimeter increments. And you also get a 1.2 millimeter solid needle pin. And it's all organized in this uh, small box. Very, a very nice kit for those doing uh, repair or desoldering jobs. So I will put a link to this in the description below. Our next item is a set of five diamond files. And let me tell you, I've been waiting for these for so long. They showed as in stock when I placed the order on uh, Banggood. But then after a couple of weeks, they went on back order. I hate it when they, they, they stack it down with uh, adhesive tape like this, because it's very hard to remove it. Anyway, as I was saying, they uh, they went on back, back order immediately after I placed my, uh, my... Well, not immediately, about two weeks after I placed my order. So I had to wait a couple of weeks for them to finally ship my order. As I mentioned earlier, I don't do that much metal work here in the lab, but since I've been uh, doing some projects involving enclosures lately, I felt the need for uh, a set of these uh, files. I don't expect to get much out of them in terms of uh, service life, but considering the price, I think it's okay. Next up, I have this assortment kit of brass standoffs. If you've been following my videos, you know that I like assortment kits and I was missing one for standoffs. Well, this one came with uh, 300 pieces hex standoffs and I have eight different types in here. This will no doubt come in handy because whenever I'm building a project into an enclosure, I find myself needing different size standoffs to mount the PCBs inside. If you click the link in the description, you will see there are other assortment kits available as well. They come in different sizes and you can get them made from nylon, black or white, or as in this kit, made of brass. So I think next I'll be getting an assortment of the nylon ones because those are very useful when trying to get better electrical isolation or when you're trying to save weight. And the last items in this video, we've got some silicone lubricant oil. Uh, some machine cup grease and a cup of uh, contact cleaner. All three are made by this uh, Polish company called AG Thermopasty and they seem to be of uh, decent quality and uh, the price as well is very accessible. The uh, silicone oil and the machine grease will be used to lubric lubricate things like cooling fans, uh, sliding bars, bearings and the contact cleaner well for cleaning flux of uh, PCBs and it also comes with this attachment brush with, which makes it really easy to clean off uh, PCBs and uh, this might be useful also for fixing uh, crusty connections. These are some chemicals that every bench should have because even if you're just doing electronics sooner or later you are going to come across some mechanical stuff that needs cleaning, lubricating or fixing in some way. I've been using some uh, some lubricating oil for some time. I think I have this uh, this bottle for maybe 10 years or something similar. But there is something strange with this uh, this oil. Let me show you what happens. You see I I've also transferred some in this uh, transparent uh, uh, bottle and as you can see it kind of separates when it's uh, left on a shelf and I don't know what why that happens but I'm, I'm I've started noticing this uh, this oil is not not very good and uh, doesn't lubricate very well at least I've tried lubricating some uh, cooling fans and uh, they started squeaking uh, quite quickly after lubrication so I think the the separation that happens with this oil is is a bad sign maybe i should uh, get rid of this uh, this oil so that's why i got this uh, silicone oil as a replacement silicone oil is used a lot in the gun industry uh, in the airsoft industry as well so you could try one of those shops to get some it will be difficult uh, for me to put links to exactly these items because i got them from a local distributor and they are not so common on ebay but i will still add some alternatives in the description below 
And as always, thank you for watching this. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.